Hi there, I'm Colette Wong and I'm here at the Jalan Besar Stadium, home of the Football Association of Singapore. This evening, the very last match of the 2022 season will be played, the Singapore Cup Final between Haogang and Tampanese. Now, 2022 marked the first time the Football Association of Singapore brought all of the live football production in-house. To do this, the FAS signed a five-year deal at the start of the year with broadcast technology firm Ideal Systems. In this video case study, we're going to take you behind the scenes and show you the brand new broadcast systems and technology that the FAS used during the season. We'll meet the people behind the technology and we'll also take a glimpse into what it takes to produce hundreds of live football matches in the Singapore Premier League and the Singapore Cup. single hardware platform which is serving the different purposes from receiving the feed either locally or remotely over SRT. So it's a mix of SDI, NDI and SRT sources. So that's a really moving towards all the IP integration. Audio is Dante, it's all IP as well. And then the different modules which are used and integrated, there is audio router, there is video mixing, there is replay integrated and VAR review. Hi, so uh, we're here in the studio in Jalan Basar in Singapore and uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Abhishek Ravi Krishnan who is the Head of Content and Production at Football Association of Singapore. Abhishek, uh, can you uh, tell us a bit about FAS for, uh, for people who aren't familiar and people outside of Singapore, obviously FAS in Singapore, everybody knows what you do, who you are, but outside of Singapore uh, what is the operations of Football Association of Singapore vis-a-vis -vis the, the project here? Um, types of productions, number of productions and, and where, you, where you deliver up to? So basically as Football Association of Singapore as the name implies, uh, we govern the game here in Singapore, the game of football or soccer as it is known in the United States. Uh, we run the local league which is the only professional sports league in Singapore. It's the Singapore Premier League. So we oversee the running of the league, we organize the league, and my part of my job as the lead for content and production, we also broadcast those games. Uh, we also oversee the uh, Women's Premier League, which is a women's competition, and some of the amateur leagues as well, uh, lower division leagues in Singapore as well. So, But the big one is obviously the Singapore Premier League, which runs over the course of the year, and we also do uh, international friendlies here in Singapore. So that's the purview of, of the kind of games that uh, we are expected to cover and that's what the broadcast uh, the aim of the broadcast is our production team and that's where we came into contact with you guys yeah. okay so we're, we're a year in now um, we're, we're here this this interview is now taking place in the beginning of 2023 and we, we, we finished the 2022 year um, that was we're, we're 200 plus matches in so far you know and we're, we've got another 200 and something matches coming up in we we have we are last year i think we were at 144 actually. 144 okay sorry. exactly i got just i just did the figures okay so it's 144 games which we broadcasted and this year uh there's a minimum of 135 games and it, it's expected to grow depending on the international games we have okay yeah um and then there, uh, how, what's your delivery? What, where, where do those games that are produced, where, where, where do they get So they go to? pushed on to multiple platforms, obviously now, today's age streaming online platforms. So you have your Facebook, your YouTubes, uh, there's even Twitch now coming out, TikTok and all that. So we mainly push it out to Facebook and YouTube and any OTT platforms that uh, want to uh, broadcast the games, including MeWatch, which is uh, the OTT platform for MediaCorp. Uh, we also push it, on, push it out to linear uh, platforms uh, for TV, basically, so your StarHub, your Singtels. And also, we've, we've pushed it out to uh, international broadcasters as well uh, via SRT, which we will discuss probably later on. Uh, we've we've uh, broadcasted the games to Malaysia and Indonesia. 
uh, and to the Maldives, I believe, as well, in the friendly last year. So we've been able, with the system we have right now, we've been able to actually uh, send the feeds to multiple locations uh, and multiple formats uh, and uh, what's and tailor make uh, those those delivery methods as well. Yeah. Okay, so getting back to the technology then, because this is all done now in house. Now, prior to 2022 season, this was outsourced to production companies and the whole lot. So, part of the project delivery here was to leverage new technologies, and 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 some of those. Well, actually, we'll discuss a few of them. Mm -hmm. So, the the NDI, the SRT, the Simply Live, we'll, we'll bring up. So, you know, leveraging those technologies to bring down the cost to make it affordable to do in house, but uh, also you know the, the the scale of this. So we we, we had to build uh, NDI local systems in in five stadiums, including this one, four, this one and four other stadiums. So we've 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 got NDI cools around, and then they interconnect with SRT, and then the distribution fees that you're talking about to the new media and to the linear TV and all that is SRT as well. So uh, just initially with, with the NDIs and the SRTs, you're one of the first, maybe the first national league in the world to, to use SRT and NDI for primary national uh, production. How has that been a year in? Uh, you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how's that experience? Uh, I think I think, like as you mentioned, cost was a big factor when we decided to go in-house, and that was something uh, that we had to mitigate, and we had to find creative solutions to 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 deliver a good a good broadcast, a good a good coverage of the game, while uh, maintaining good standards, while let's just say embracing new technology to bring down those costs. And so, as you mentioned, having NDI and, and using SRT, what what it allowed us to do is become more flexible. Uh, and, and we were able to think out of the box uh, as to how to cover these games because traditionally if you were to go cable to cable point to point you know there's cost involved there's manpower involved and obviously when you talk about delivery uh, inter interconnecting stadiums interconnecting uh, broadcasters uh, to the stadiums to MCRs and all that there's also if it goes by, by satellite it's, it's pretty high cost as well so even even that even using SRT or leveraging on IP delivery helped us bring down that cost but at the same time, not really compromise quality. So after a year in, obviously, we had teething issues, and that's expected of any technology, new technology. But I think that you, after after a full year of having uh, worked with these uh, with these new technologies, I can say that it's it's something that the f we will embrace more in the future, and it's it, and that's definitely where we're going towards, or the broadcast industry will go towards. So, s stepping slightly away from the technology for a second. In previous years, when when you had outsourced your production, um, you, you, do you find now, by comparison, that you were doing everything in house that you have more control, more flexibility? So, if people want new feeds for a, for a different platform, that they can be spun up. Are you finding other benefits being the being you know in you know, having brought this into a, a, a vertically integrated kind of sports organization as opposed to you know we we have the football and somebody else looks after all our sports production and content so as you mentioned so everything centralized now right now at Jalan Besar which is the home of the football association of Singapore so having all the feeds come back here having everything come come out of the centralized hub obviously makes a lot of things easier for us uh, as you mentioned simple stuff like even clipping out uh, footage which which another department might need or a taker might need specific stuff uh, became a lot easier in house and with the technology we have as well and 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 doing surround content as well you know using using the footage we have using the games we have planning around those games uh, well, we were able to streamline it better because previously when you go out so when you outsource it to a production house there are a lot of factors that need to be taken into account. Uh, how, what the capability is of, of whoever's run, do, uh, covering the game and what the limitations are of maybe the equipment they have obviously budget constraints as well so all of that uh, after we've come in-house it allows us to be a bit more uh, as you mentioned flexible and we can decide pick and choose what works for us and, and with the end goal in mind so that, that's been very helpful for us and, and do you think also given that this is going on for another four years that before 
maybe production companies might change from year to year. Now you've got in-house expertise, same system. Do you think that that can give more consistency? You can build on previous year's experience. You think that'll be the, a benefit? This is definitely, the word is consistency here, where we can, we have a base. So after the first year, that was our base. And we're building on and on. And, and uh, what I tell everyone is every year, we intend to, our coverage will get better for sure. As we embrace the technology, even, the techno even with the technology we have, there's always new firmware, software updates. This even the hardware gets updated. Sure. So, so, so I can safely say that more cameras. The, possibly, yeah. yeah. And and the system we have is flexible enough sure. to allow for more cameras or even scale down in the sense. Yeah. If you're doing an amateur game, sure. We can scale it down as well. So we can we can basically go in any direction that we want to. But I'm pretty certain and and I'm pretty confident to say that uh, with the base that we've set, we can grow and improve year on year. Fantastic. So. Again, just going back to the technology. So we we discussed the uh, NDI pools uh, in the five stadium. So that they they're essentially bringing in the camera fees, the audio. So we've native NDI cameras. They're the they're the bird dog cameras. So they're easy. You just plug in and they they, they plug and go. Um, uh, and then we've JVC cameras which don't have native NDI. So we put uh, KiloView converters on those or bird dog converters. We put converters on those. Um, and we bring them in. So we've got all these NDI feeds, they come back to each of the stadiums, uh, into a hub on Netgear, uh, and then uh, into SRT, and then back to Jalan Basar for the remote matches. The local matches are locally here. Ultimately, all these feeds uh, up to, you know, so sometimes you can actually have simultaneous matches both in the Jalan Basar Central Stadium and a remote stadium. So you can have two matches being produced simultaneously live here. Yeah, two remote as well. So it's or two any remote. Okay, all right. Yeah. Two remote as well. So, but they come back. The simply live systems are are, are the, the, they're they're the heart of, of this, right? So, the all these feeds are coming into simply live. Uh, this is the first deployment of simply live in Southeast Asia. First deployment in an NDI space as well. Uh, simply live obviously has now become Riddell Simply Live uh, during the duration of, the, of of our working together as well. So. Uh, can you talk a bit about your experience in Simply Live? Because again, it's kind of a, a new technology and, and different from what, what people have used in the past. So I think Simply Live, as you mentioned, is the heart of a production because every feed comes into a Simply Live system. And what it's offered us is, like as I mentioned before, flexibility. Right now, if it's a local game, you can go NDI, you can go SDI, it's fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, we also have the report capability <laughs> where it's IP delivery. You can get SRT feeds in, you can get RTMP feeds in. Uh, so a, almost any form of uh, IP delivery is acceptable as well, and it's the heart. And 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 what happens is from there you have a replay unit if, for for the operators. You have a, a vision mixing console as well, and you can also mix audio. So you can scale up to have a full blown production. You know, you, we have the flexibility to go to two replay operators if we want to, if we have enough camera angles. You know, and also we can scale down. And the other way is to do an all in one production where it's one guy controlling the basic uh, needs of the production, which is switching, uh, replace, graphics, and audio. So so that flexibility is, is something that uh, I don't think a lot of people have seen before in the past, or even if the, if it's it's come out in the market, the reliability of, of, of the system as well. So uh, we are very happy with, uh, what, with what Simply Life has been able to provide. And not only that, I think the key thing, which we probably will go into in a bit, is the ability to also have VAR. So having that simply set setup allowed us was key and uh, was the key component uh, for us to get VR, which is kicking off this season. And we only the second Southeast Asian country uh, to implement VR, and FIFA has given the green light for that as well. So having the simply lab system on the broadcast end and providing that all the feeds for a VAR system, which is also from Simply Life, uh, made the whole integration a lot easier for us. You touched on something there, uh, which is interesting. Obviously, you're you're affiliated with uh, FIFA organization. Uh, they hadn't seen this technology before either, uh, so you, you have to take a, a a bunch of guys over from Geneva to, to come and inspect your operations. How how are FIFA with uh, the you? Uh, leading uh, or, or you know, break a new band on technology for, for, uh, for football? I think the key thing, uh, the takeaway that we, or the sensing that I got was the fact that uh, merging broadcast along with VR, because traditionally what you have is a broadcaster separate, 
and then obviously the 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 league wants to implement VAR, and so the broadcasters will provide all the feeds that they get through the VAR. So there's a there's a bridge there, and as you know, things get lost in translation. Things they might be on different. They have different goals. The broadcast has different goals from VAR. But what we were allowed, we were able to do is we integrated both together, and and when once it's together, everything that's available to our broadcast is also available to VAR, and so we're moving in the same direction. And that was one of the things that FIFA commended commended us for, and said that yeah, this is a new new kind of way of working, mm -hmm. which uh, I think traditionally we will not see in other countries. So that was pretty exciting, and I think well the fact that we've embraced new technology uh, to get the same end result as other countries. So I think that's something that's very encouraging as well. Um, and uh, we also uh, extended the, the NDI network into the VAR room and, and, and stuck in some bird dog box cameras yeah, to, yeah. to look down and they can be used straight into production because once you plug into NDI, it becomes available on the switch as well. So, so, so the, the with <coughs> within the stadium, I think the NDI connectivity has allowed us a, a ease, ease of choosing which cameras we want to use, uh, which cameras we might not want to use for a particular game. Uh, the access to different feeds, so it's customizable right now. If you want to have a look at, like as you mentioned, the bird dog cameras in the v in the video operators room, which is basically giving you a view of the referees in the room, we can switch it, which is between cameras. You know, we don't have we're not limited by the connection of it. Mm -hmm. So that has allowed us, uh, given us uh, a kind of freedom that we've not had previously. Okay. And um, looking forward over the next couple of years, what what uh, what are the possible uh, things that you'd look to do, or uh, is is that uh, if you had a crystal ball here, where where, where does this go in the next couple of years? I would say uh, maybe increasing the number of cameras, uh, the kind of cameras we want to use as well. We might we might want to change that, but I think another key thing is to allow for more graphics integration. We have a green screen studio here that we are in uh, to make it more dynamic. I think that's something that. We we'll look forward to doing. Clarify do. that. If the yeah. background is not green, then uh, it has been put in. <laughs> so if the background is green, uh, you know we're in a green screen. Yeah. So so the green screen studio <laughs> to also to make use of of because so currently we're using it for what it is. It's just a green screen studio. You key in a background, but we want to we want to obviously maximize that virtual real estate. Sure, a bit so of that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so using like you mentioned augmented reality uh, it, it within our graphic system as well. So that's something that we want to grow uh, or, or go towards. But I think the key thing for this year, at least, is is making sure that we get the broadcast and, and VR integrated fully and uh, working working well as well. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, another exciting year of football about to commence in 2023. So far, it's been a blast. Thank you. Abhishek, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for joining us. And. Um, uh, there will be a website address somewhere here. Uh, you can click on this link if you want more information. You can contact us and we can send you out more information. And uh, from uh, John and Basar, thank you very much and have a great day. Well, I hope you found it interesting to see what goes on behind the scenes where a large group of dedicated people use the latest technology to bring the best live coverage to football fans in Singapore and beyond on TV, mobile and internet. Thanks for watching.